We're going to talk about some basic drawing and editing tools, uh, general drawing tools, how to edit Revit elements, basic modifying tools, and really focus on how to draw walls because that's where you should start a Revit project for the most part. Uh, let's go and make a new template. Instead of construction, let's go and switch down to architectural. Or actually, let's go to browse. How about we use uh, residential instead? So you have different kinds of templates you could start with. We'll start with the residential default. Click OK. And uh, let's go ahead and click on wall. Notice that similar to Inventor, you have different shapes that you could draw. You have line, you have rectangle, you have inscribed and circumscribed polygons, circles, three-point arcs, center end arcs, different kinds of fillets or tangent end arcs, a fillet arc. You can pick certain lines and you can pick faces and you have mystery buttons. <laughs> Let's go and click line. Click somewhere on your page and as you move your mouse you'll see that the uh, there's a preview displayed for you. I want you to also take note that you have these little guidelines that show you when you are perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. Uh, just like Inventor, you can start pointing at one direction. You can type in something like 30 and hit enter. It will make a line that's 30 inches long. And if we wanted to make it just by stretching it out and clicking, we could do that as well. We have the option, if we click rectangle, Notice that as I get close to the edges, just like Inventor and other modeling programs, it will let you know when you're lined up with something like with the midpoint or with an endpoint or when you're close to an endpoint. All right. If I clicked on the three point arc button, I could click two endpoints and click where the center would be. And this would give me an idea of. Uh, what this might look like. Also note that when you're doing all of this, the walls are automatically joining up next to each other. They were drawn as separate things. If I were to click line again and I drew a line through here, right now you can see there's a difference between the two lines where they intersect. As soon as I go to place it though, everything is joined. It's all one solid piece through here. Also note that whenever I click, a new line is created. This is because this chain button is selected on. If I were to uncheck that, the next time I go to place a wall section, I, it does not try and continue making more walls. Let's go back to our modify tool real quick and select all of this. Mm. Yeah, let's just start over. Hit delete. Let's go back to wall again. And we'll start with a simple rectangle. If I wanted to change the size of this rectangle, go ahead and hit cancel a couple times or escape a couple times. I could just click and drag one of my endpoints. Oop. I take that back. I can click and drag one of my walls. I could change the shape of the rectangle in that way. I could just click and drag one of these blue endpoints and that would change where this wall is attached. Or I could click it and see how there's a number that pops up. I could type in a new value here. Uh, just for the sake of continuing the lesson, let's go and go back to wall. Let's make another little rectangle here. The walls overlap. Yeah, that's okay. Use cut geometry to embed one wall within the other. So it's saying that it wants us uh, to cut away the wall that's repeated over the other. We're just going to select it and hit delete. 
and then I can just grab that endpoint and drag it back up to this midpoint. This is also overlapping, so I'm going to delete that and then click and drag this wall up to this point. Now, here's what I want you to do. Let's change this dimension to 15. Let's change this one to 12. Let's make this 15. And instead of 37 here, let's make it 25. Notice how these are not playing nice with this. If I want to make any of these dimensions permanent so they don't change like they have been, there's a little button right underneath it where you can click that and make it a permanent dimension. Let's go back to trying to make that one 25. That did not stay at 15, did it? Huh, that's odd. We can lock it in place and then it should for sure. There we go. So 15, 25, I forget why I said for these. 12, 14, does that seem right? Let's make this one 15 again. Do that. And click on the line. Lock that in place so it stays at 15. Let's go back to this one that's set at 11. Let's make that, uh, oh, let's make that one 10. And then if we click on the line, we can lock that in place. Okay, so now these walls are all locked. You shouldn't be able to click and drag anything. Instead, we're clicking and dragging the entire structure. And let's go ahead, click wall one more time. And we will add a it's a little thing right here. And just click and drag that wall back to the midpoint. If I click on this, I can change the radius. Instead of nine feet, let's make that an even ten. And then let's click the dimension underneath it so it displays. And I am going to have you guys print this. So click up on Revit. Go down to where it says print. We're going to print the current window. Preview it. Make sure you put your name on this after it prints out. And turn this in for grade for this video. And uh, I should be able to see your dimensions as well. As long as you're checking to make those permanent dimensions, they should show up displayed on the video. So things that we covered in here that you're going to be quizzed over is that uh, walls well chain by default. We click back on wall. If I click somewhere, I don't even have to click. Unless you have this chain unchecked, it will chain by default. Um, a couple other things I forgot to mention. I can go and do right now. In this options bar, you have where you can specify height, and if it's connected to something like a, if the wall goes all the way up to the first floor or second floor or roof, right now these walls are set to be 20 feet tall. And when we draw things, it's going off the wall center line. And you can make offsets if you're making curves, you can set the radius. Um, I need to show you, if you click modify, that there is a couple of little arrows that show up anytime I click on a wall, no matter what wall I click on. And they do mean something. This is where the outside of the wall is. With generic walls, you can't really see 
what that means or why. But if I change this generic wall to something that has a much different inside and outside, like if I have wood siding on wood studs exterior or brick on a wood stud, okay, and I change that wall to be that, then when I go to a 3D view of the same thing, Let's see if I can make these where you can see them both at the same time. Let's turn on realistic colors here, or at least consistent colors. See how this brick wall is facing inside? It's because here this exterior was on the inside. Now that's on the outside, if I go back to my 3D view, it will be on not the outside, but on the inside. So when you're drawing walls, make sure you go through and you click and that all of these little arrows are on the outside of the building and not the inside of the building. There you go. So go ahead and do that as well. Uh, we talked about, again, chains. We talked about what the little arrows mean, if it's inside or outside. We talked about how you can just click an endpoint of a wall and drag it to resize it or to unconnect it. And that's a lot of it. We talked about different shapes for the draw tool, the draw options, snaps and alignments temporary dimensions and how to make those dimensions go from being temporary to being permanent okay make sure you have a printout uh, don't disconnect this for your printout and a quiz will follow good luck